of the Superman cartoons uh, and the Adventures of Superman radio show uh, give DC the idea uh, to bring Batman to the silver screen. Uh, the Dark Knight in glorious black and white. Uh, the first live action film based on a DC character. Uh, this is in 1943. Uh, it's a 15 part serial for Columbia Pictures. Uh, one chapter uh, would unreal once a week at theaters for 15 weeks. Uh, the Batman serial uh, was slightly weak on production values. It features a low budget. Uh, and has no real logical plot, uh, but it has plenty of amazing action. Uh, each episode had a cliff ha uh, cliffhanger ending uh, that would lead into the next chapter. The director for the 1943 Batman serial was Lambert Hillier. Uh, Hillier uh, was a veteran of Universal Horror Films. Uh, and he creates a very uh, spooky, gothic, uh, sinister atmosphere uh, that is strangely lit and dimly photographed. The Batcave uh, is an innovation of the Batman serial. Uh, it enters the Dark Knight mythos via the movies uh, with a great opening scene of a uh, cavernous basement, uh, Batman's subterranean hideout, uh, a chamber that has been carved by himself from the living rock. Uh, the serial also introduces Alfred the Butler into Batman lore. Uh, Alfred uh, is a crossover character that shows up in the Columbia Pictures serial and the DC comic books at exactly the same time. Uh, the plot of the 1943 Batman serial uh, is basically a wartime propaganda tale about evil Japanese spies uh, and their leader, a Dr. Daka, uh, a sinister oriental yellow uh, peril villain type uh, that's played by the great character actor J. Carol Nash. Uh, well, the Jap spies steal loads of radium in order to construct a death ray. Uh, Batman was played by actor Lewis Wilson, and Robin is played by Douglas Croft. Uh, they drive a very impressive Batmobile, a dark and sinister black Cadillac. Now, B-Movie King producer at Columbia Pictures, Sam Katzman, makes so much money off the 1943 Batman serial, uh, he basically keeps the Columbia Studios afloat with the serial. Uh, he decides to uh, bring Superman uh, to the live-action screen. Uh, now, th this happens in 1948. Uh, the entire 1948 serial, which is four hours plus, actually costs less than one of the Fleischer Brothers Man of Steel cartoons for Paramount. Katzman decides to keep the leading actor uh, who plays Superman. He decides to keep his identity a secret. Uh, an idea that worked on the radio show. And actor Kirk Alwyn uh, goes unbilled in the serial. He gets no billing. Uh, and actually uh, sh shouts up, up, and away every time he leaps into the air, just like on the radio program. Uh, Noel Nell, uh, who plays Lois Lane, uh, receives top billing. Uh, and the film actually uses animation for its special effects. Uh, and each time that Superman uh, goes into the air, takes flight, he turns into a drawing. Uh, the plot features a supervillain, the Spider Lady, uh, played by actress Carol Foreman. Uh, the Spider Lady is a beautiful, busty, blonde in a black mask uh, who has a big electrified spider web in her hideout uh, and has loads of minions in double-breasted suits scattered all over the country, uh, not to mention a steady supply of kryptonite on hand. Uh, she struggles with the Man of Steel over a futuristic weapon, a type of reducer ray. Uh, this reducer ray can shrink anything to microscopic size, including a possible invading army. Uh, the Superman uh, 1948 serial was filmed in less than four weeks, uh, but turned out, uh, regardless of its low budget, to be the most successful serial in film history. 
Uh, it makes tons of money. Uh, this, of course, uh, all this money uh, coming in from the cereal gives Katzman the idea to bring back Batman, uh, this time in Batman and Robin in 1949. Uh, this is a 12-chapter serial, I believe. Uh, this time, uh, it's directed by Spencer Bennett. Uh, it has a much smaller budget than the first Batman serial, uh, and much less atmosphere. Uh, Robert Lowry uh, is a distinct improvement as Batman. Uh, he's a much better actor, uh, and he's a former stuntman. Uh, he's tough, sturdy, good-looking, uh, and a no-nonsense dark knight. Uh, John Duncan plays Robin, uh, but he's too old for the part. Uh, thankfully, he keeps his mouth shut and doesn't say many bad jokes. <laughs> or bad puns uh, during the course of the serial. Uh, the plot centers around a masked supervillain called the Wizard uh, and his many weird inventions. Uh, the best moment uh, in the serial is when Batman, Robert Lowry, is silhouetted against the night sky, uh, his cape unfurled as he leaps down on his enemies. It's a great moment in the serial. Uh, the smaller budget or whatever, uh, Batman and Robin also makes tons of money. Uh, so producer Katzman decides to do a second Superman serial called Adam Man vs. Superman. This is 1950. Adam Man uh, was also adapted from the Superman radio series. Uh, Kirk Alwyn uh, returns to the role of Superman and again remains unbilled uh, uh, in the credits. Noel Neal uh, again plays Lois Lane and again gets top billing. The villain this time is the Adam Man, who is actually Lex Luthor, uh, played with gusto uh, by the great character actor Lyle Talbot. Uh, Lyle Talbot also played Commissioner Gordon uh, in the 1949 Batman and Robin. Luthor uh, wears a big shiny mask to disguise himself uh, and invents an atomic uh, kryptonite ray machine that breaks down atoms. Uh, he wants to disassemble Superman with the atomic krypton ray, uh, break down Superman's atoms, uh, and then shoot the Man of Steel into outer space. Luthor, in the serial, is also the inventor of the flying saucer, the first ship to reach outer space. Uh, this Adam Man uh, serial has its moments, uh, but the very low budget hurts the attempt to realize the grand concepts of fantasy and science fiction uh, that the serial envisions and wishes to achieve. Well, low budget or not, Adam Man makes lots of money. So Robert Maxwell the supervisor of the radio program, The Adventures of Superman, decides to make his own Man of Steel movie. Uh, Maxwell creates a modest 58-minute production called Superman and the Mole Men. Uh, this is in 1951. Uh, the film easily makes back its cost, and then some, and serves as a pilot for the Superman television series, uh, it was later split into two TV episodes. Uh, Maxwell cast veteran supporting actor George Reeves as Superman and Phyllis Coates as Lois Lane. Now, Coates brings a new sense of menace to the role of Lois and uh, plays her in a darker film nourish fashion uh, than the playful No Neil. Uh, the Mole Men were played by little actors uh, little people in small, uh, well, unconvincing bald wigs, uh, caps, bald caps. Uh, these visitors from an underground world have a mysterious weapon, uh, which is actually a portable uh, Hoover vacuum cleaner uh, with a funnel stuck on the end of it. Now, Kellogg's, uh, Kellogg's Cereal, the sponsor of the radio show for 10 years, is so impressed with the success of the Mole Men's uh, Superman movie that they become interested in Maxwell's idea for a TV show. Now, the first two seasons of The Adventures of Superman are shot in black and white, 
and often have a uh, film noirish, dark, dramatic tone. But beginning with the third season, the program is shot in color, uh, and the darkly beautiful Phyllis Coates uh, leaves the series. She's no longer the Lois Lane. No Neil, uh, the Lois Lane from the two movie serials, then joins the cast. Uh, and brings a sense of comic mischief and a much lighter tone uh, to the role of Lois and the entire series. Uh, the cast of regulars becomes a very effective ensemble uh, with a distinctive comedic flair. Uh, there's great interaction uh, between the personalities of Jimmy Olsen, Jack Lambert, and Perry White, John Hamilton. Uh, the plots of the color episodes usually revolve around uh, lots of eccentric scientists and their stolen inventions. Uh, George Reeves played Superman very well and stamps his image on the role for all time. Uh, he makes Superman uh, invulnerably decent, uh, and he's very convincing in the role. Uh, but in real life, George Reeves was not as saintly as Superman. Uh, Reeves enjoyed uh, his wine women and song uh, and he sometimes lost his temper on the set uh, especially during the flying sequences uh, where he was suspended by invisible wires uh, and put in considerable danger uh, Reeves was also launched by a springboard uh, that was concealed below the cameras when Superman uh, leapt through the window uh, a fluffy mattress was waiting for him on the other side of the set uh, Reeves uh, in fact, like to have affairs with the wives of powerful, uh, well, uh, uh, movie and television executives, uh, not to mention gangsters, uh, which would often land him in a shitload of trouble. Uh, but everyone was uh, rather shocked, nevertheless, uh, when he was found dead of a gunshot wound on uh, June 16, 1959. Uh, crazy rumors... Uh, instantly began to circulate, uh, basically immediately after his death. Uh, for example, uh, that Reeves had gone crazy and jumped off a skyscraper uh, wearing his Superman costume, uh, suffering from delusions that he could actually fly. Uh, another rumor was that Reeves had shot himself because he could not find any work after the cancellation of the Superman television series. Uh, most people actually believed this second rumor, uh, but in reality, uh, Reeves had just gotten engaged to be married and had just signed a contract for another season of The Adventures of Superman. Uh, even though the program was canceled, uh, it was still very, very popular, and fans demanded that the show be brought back on television. Uh, Reeves was not only set to act in the series as Superman, but also planned to direct several episodes. Uh, the coroner listed his death as a suicide, uh, which is still a controversial verdict uh, to this very day. Uh, several bullet holes were found in the walls of his home, uh, and the family decided to hire a private detective to investigate. Uh, the private investigator concluded uh, that foul play was indeed involved, uh, but the P.I. was unable to find the killer. Uh, in the gumshoe's opinion, murder was most likely the cause of uh, Reeves' death, uh, but it was virtually impossible to prove it. Uh, in my opinion, uh, Reeves was in love, not in despair. 